everybody. I am going to call the first committee of the whole meeting for 2023 to order. Do roll call. Alder Feldy. <laughs> Alder Felicki Pineski. Here. Alder Ackley is excused. Alder Ramey. Here. Alder Salazar. Here. Alder Decker. Here. Alder Perella. Here. Alder Mitchell. Here. Alder Heideman. And Alder Rust is president. Present. Uh, go number two. Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I do not believe we have anybody for public forum this evening. So we will move on to number four, and I'd just like to remind that this is an overview. We're getting an idea tonight. We're not going to, we'll ask questions after each presentation. That'd be much appreciated. We all have to go to work tomorrow. <laughs> all right, Alder, uh, Director Kruger. Thank you very much. So first off, I wanna start with a overview of what we're looking at for 2024 um, in order to have all of the committee um, aware of what the options are moving forward. You will hear from every department over the next, well, I'll say the next two meetings. So tonight, and a reminder that next Monday, September 11th is the uh, second committee of the whole meeting um, with the second set of departments presenting. First, I wanted just to bring up some items of note. Um, the budget is still in a fluid state. Um, as um, most of you know from previous budget cycles, often the budget comes to council in a proposed form um, towards the end of the year. It's typically given out in um, the end of October. We're having these presentations tonight and next week so that the council has a better opportunity and more chances to ask questions of departments and to understand better what the needs of needs of everyone are. So I just encourage, like all the rest mentioned, make sure you're asking questions if you have anything um, for the department heads while they're here. The current budget projections and the numbers that you'll see tonight are based on the guidance that have been given to me from um, Alders Decker and Salazar, and also the mayor. I will note that Administrator Bradley, though he has will not be officially starting for several weeks, he has committed to helping out um, and give some guidance on this process so that I am not the one making decisions, but somebody else um, is taking that away from me, which is great. So again, the second uh, Committee of the Whole Budget Workshop is September 11th, so next Monday following Finance and Personnel Committee. October 2nd um, is when the Common Council actually gets the budget res resolution with the preliminary numbers built into it, which will then get referred again to this body, the Committee of the Whole, for review on the Oct October 23rd. Um, and then November 6th is the date that Common Council needs to uh, adopt the budget in order for the tax bills to go out later in the month. So I wanted just to again bring up the goals for the committee tonight. Um, you're going to hear from department heads regarding their current and upcoming challenges um, that the city and their department is facing. Uh, our hope is that you gain an understanding of the requests that are going to be coming forward so that you can ask those questions and make sure that you feel comfortable with what um, the budget ends up being proposed and brought forward to you. And additionally, um, there is uh, the opportunity for committee members to have their voice heard on what they think is important um, to be included in the final preliminary, final preliminary budget. Uh, so the proposed budget um, before it comes forward. So again, if there's something of note that you want on the record to have um, be considered for the, the final version of the budget you see, make sure that you speak um, your mind uh, as well. So in, um, first I'm gonna take a step back and just tell um, the committee what we have done to date. There were um, budget instructions given to every department head with three sections that um, were told to be gone through. The first was an item for known increases. 
because we are in a different um, type of financial situation for 2024 as in previous, um, compared to previous years, we do have a little bit of flexibility for some um, actual filling of requests. I'll say the past two years that I've been here, uh, the budget process more has been, if you know you have an increase, you have to cut somewhere else in order to uh, fulfill the need that you have elsewhere. So we have the known increases from every department. Those are items that are contractual that we have to have to have in the budget every year and we know that their increase is um, going to be coming. So instead of having people, um, the department heads cut elsewhere within their budget, we asked for the listing of those known increases to see if we could fulfill some of those requests. The second item was an additional needs listing. This was a list of items that weren't necessarily a known required increase to be built into the budget, but an item that is uh, very um, important to the department in efficiency or improved service or um, pretty much of necessity, but we have not been covering it to date. So those are the additional needs listings. And then lastly, there is the capital improvements program, which we won't be covering that tonight because we'll already be here for a while, I'm sure. So the uh, department heads turned in their items August 15th, and on August 22nd, the department heads held a workshop actually very similar to what we're doing here tonight, where every department head presented their items to the rest of the uh, uh, department head staff in order for internally us to get um, a better understanding of what every department's up against and what requests are coming through. So it gave the department heads the chance, just like you are tonight, to ask questions of our peers and understand the, uh, the challenges that we're up against. Also, the IT service fund charges have been reallocated with a new formula. Previously, it was based on some arbitrary number that was determined, I'm guessing, decades ago, um, where the it, it was not really tied to anything in particular that we could tell. So we took the opportunity with the with the funds that we have to actually reallocate it um, according to actual a uh, formula, users, munis. Uh, computers, munis users, email addresses for department, phones, items of that sort to actually have it tied to um, an actual formula. So we did um, do that and it is built into the budget for 2024. And we took the opportunity so that previously, if there was an increase again in IT service fund charges, um, the departments were required to cover it with something else in their department, so by cutting something else. So we, since we're asking them to give us their known increases, we um, felt it was the time to reallocate so that the departments did not have to find those funds if it was going up for their department. I will say from that point of view, finances charge, this is just an example, was previously $245,000 a year and so it, it will now be $75,000. I don't get to go and spend another $170,000. It's just reallocated to other departments. Additionally, um, I have already done preliminary salary and budget um, benefit projections, which have been calculated and put into the 2024 uh, projection as well. We'll go over that very high level tonight, but um, the review is continuing on that as well. So I wanted to start by just going over the known increases that were uh, requested, and I'm going to back up for a second. This entire presentation is in your packets online if you have not seen that already. So the 2024 budget known increases, these are the pie chart here shows requests by function. That's a financial reporting um, method. So that's what um, you're seeing on the screen here. The amount that was requested for known increases by departments that are supported with tax levy was $1.02 million. So those are items that uh, department heads say are required next year in order to just maintain the level of business that we're already doing. Um, the, there are other uh, requests, I shall say, but they are covered by other items. So for example, wastewater, which we'll hear from tonight, they have increases that they have built into their budget, but they are covered by user fees. So we're going to look at the general fund, library and transit separately because those are impacted by the tax levy. 
Here are the budget known increases by department, and this is as of today because there are, like I mentioned earlier, there are continuous changes to what um, items are out there for consideration. So um, again, I'm not gonna pinpoint any of these at the moment, but these are what make up that $1.02 million worth of requests. For 2024 salary and benefit projections, uh, we have some factors that we included in order to come up with those numbers. We, for non-represented employees or, or employees that are not in the union, we did include an inflationary factor adjustment to the entire scale. And then there is a step for them as well to recognize longevity for their year of service here. There is a percentage increase built in for the union contracts that we're anticipating. Um, all three, well, four unions are currently, um, their contracts are up or have expired. So we do not know the final numbers for those, but we have at least built in a percentage increase um, at, into the projection at this time. There are going to be no changes to health or dental insurance rates. Um, that's a huge win for employees. This is our third year with the same rates. And I think um, most people know um, if you're not working, that's quite unheard of. Um, I know from my spouse's experience, that was definitely unheard of. So we're on the third year of the same premiums, which is great for, again, the employees here. Also built into the projection are the increase in required WRS contribution rates. Again, those are set by the state, so that is completely out of the city's control, but those are already built in. At this time, we have no adjustment for seniority or years of service. Um, when the comp plan was initially introduced, we had said that if there was funds available, we would look at options to um, potentially adjust um, individuals who maybe did not get their full years of service recognized during the implementation. So there is no adjustment built into the projection at this time. However, I will be having um, next week with um, human resources presentation, that number will be presented for consideration as well. So when we look at how much money we actually need in order to pay for these salary increases for the employees we already have, it is a substantial number. You can see on the screen, um, there's 2023 budget, the 2024 projection, and then the variance is how much um, money is either needed or not needed based on, um, if you look at health insurance, there's a reduction. Um, but the bottom line is the total increase for salary and benefits for 2024 is projected to be just over a million dollars. Of, of that million dollars, 986,000 of it are general fund and library fund employees. So the majority of the increases are in the general fund. I will also note the reason the health insurance is actually going down. I mentioned that the rates are staying the same. We have had a significant number of individuals who previously had positions held by um, people with family insurance and it's gone to single insurance or single plus spouse, which has a significantly lower cost. So we have the actual amounts built in um, compared to the 2023 budget. So the 2024 additional needs, these are the items that were requested above and beyond those known increases. The request total for those are $2.1 million. Majority of these requests are related to additional staffing. And I, I believe my last count was that there were requests for 24 full-time equivalent positions. Since we've been talking about the expenses, we'll talk about the revenues for just a moment as well. There are quite a few numbers that are still outstanding with the state, but we do have two um, items that we do know about for increases for next year. Um, the bill that passed uh, several, um, maybe months ago now, time's flying, but the uh, state shared revenue increase from the state's um, bill that they passed is $1.9 million. So that's additional annual revenue that the city will see moving forward. And there is a, an additional um, factor built in for future increases to that number that's tied to sales tax. So it's not a one-time revenue that is a, an, a number that will be there year after year moving forward. The tax levy adjustment um, estimate was approximately $780,000. The 
That number comes from two sources. It is net new construction, but also with the closure of the six um, tax increment districts earlier this year, that is where it, why that number is so high this year compared to normal. That is, again, a number that will be in our tax levy that we could take every year moving forward if we so choose. And that number, I think, on an average previous year was about 200,000. So that just shows how much more there is for 2024 compared to a normal year. Um, there are no TIDs that are um, looking at closing in the near future. And I will also just mention that the other half of the TID closure has to go to tax reduction. So we don't get the, we get 780,000. If it was based on the full value of the TID, it would have been more um, funds in the tax levy, but the state law actually has it written that you only get to capture 50% of that. So it's supposed to go towards tax relief for the other half. The other unknown items currently include the uh, Department of Transportation Road and Highway Aid and the manufacturing assessed value is still not posted as of today. And then the um, in future years, just for consideration and just to make sure everyone remembers, the utility aid will decrease um, over a certain number of years if the plant um, ever does decide to close. Big picture, we're looking at the financial impact of what we're um, talking about tonight. The projected revenue increase with just that tax levy amount and the state shared revenue is about $2.75 million. If we take the $1.02 million of known adjustments that were requested and the current salary increases that have been put into the projection, we are actually looking at um, approximately $746,000 left to be spent. That's that bottom number. If we add in the amounts that were additionally requested on that additional needs listing of 2.1 million, we have actually overspent the budget by $1.4 million. So not everyone can get everything on their additional needs listing. And we also, as um, the council needs to consider that the, um, these recurring expenses, if we hire somebody, you have to have that every year moving forward. So it's just a consideration, making sure that the council looks at kind of the big picture and strategic planning moving forward on how these requests should be considered. I said we're not talking about capital projects today, but I did at least want to get high level for you so that you have, again, the bigger picture. So the uh, current year 2023 to 2027 um, capital improvement project plan that's in place has $17 million worth of capital projects in the budget for this year. What was planned for next year in that same plan was just, um, just about $23.5 million. What has been submitted for 2024 um, as the request was $34.6 million. So we have an increase of about $11 million worth of just requests for next year's budget in the capital improvement plan. Any questions on the budget overview before I jump into department presentations? Any questions? All right. We'll roll right into number five. This will seem really fast. So finance is, um, of course, my department. So I'm here to present on their on finance's behalf. Um, I'd say the current and upcoming challenges for the department um, are really just related to um, process improvement and still cleaning up um, previous records. There, there are audit findings that we have had on the past several years worth of audits that I'm still attempting to get through um, and I'm hoping to get through them in the, the next cycle of audit. Um, but with almost a full new staff in, finance, in the finance department over the past two years, it has been a learning curve for almost all of us. Um, luckily, we have some um, two employees who have been here longer than two years and they have been a great help to the department. Um, but that is um, mostly what the challenges are for the finance department, um, just working through those known issues that have been discussed previously with the council. The only known increase um, line that is in finance is for contracted services. The amount that um, I'm requesting is just over $9,000. 
This covers two contracts, one being Sheboygan County. We have a purchasing agent that we share with the county. So there, that contract is going up just over $3,500. And then our audit contract with Baker Tilly has a built-in um, accelerator, so it will be the 5,500 additional dollars there. Finance is not asking for any additional uh, items beyond the contract increases. And I'm also going to present for the municipal court because we know that the judge just started, so um, I am just covering for tonight. The known increases for the municipal court total just um, just about twenty eight hundred dollars. These include a software and maintenance um, subscription, software maintenance and subscription for their tips software going up by three percent. The contracted services is going up about twelve hundred dollars for a new copier lease payment um, that was increased over twenty twenty three. And then the amount for tools and small equipment covers two laptops per the IT replacement schedule. Municipal Court is also not asking for any additional items at this time. Any questions on either of those departments? Any questions? Oh, Alder Perella. I just have a quick question, actually, but um, regarding the previous the general, I, I'm curious about the 24 new full-time positions. How does that compare to previous year, do you, years? Do you know? As far as a request on new full-time personnel staff. Sure, so in previous years, we really haven't given the option to department heads to have a request for additional staff because there was no funding available to actually pay for that. So if they were to have had an additional staff member, they would have to more than likely cover it with something else. So let's say if they wanted a new um, laborer out in the field, like at, for DPW, for example, they might have to reduce the amount of supplies that they get for that department. So there have been minor table of organization changes that have been put through, but a lot of them have been covered by different either expense reductions or slight revenue increases that could be tied to, to that position. And they would come up with by department, right? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Any other questions? Alrighty. Seeing none. Thank you, Director Krieger. We will have Mayor Sorensen uh, present his budget. All right. Uh, thank you, Council Members. Um, mine will be generally pretty easy as well, too. Uh, for my budget over the course, well, first of all, I do want to uh, commend and thank uh, the Finance Director. Uh, for her work and putting a lot of this together and doing the behind the scenes and running the numbers as well. So this is definitely no easy task, but overall, um, I, I, I wanna thank her too for just the increased, increased cooperation and understanding amongst department heads and staff so we get a better understanding of you know, the, the needs for the budget and obviously what is all discussed tonight is not final or, or, uh, or uh, uh, um, uh, what we're proposing tonight, just giving council members a better understanding of where our needs are for each department. So overall, um, like Director Krieger said too, a lot of the, the, the financial standing for the city is, is pretty good. You know, just closing uh, a number of TIDs as well as the increases shared revenue puts us in a very strong uh, financial standing for the city. And as we work through this process, uh, we'll figure out where our needs are. And by no means as the, the full 24 uh, number of employees will be, or new increases will be presented for a final approval for the council as well. So. Um, overall, my budget has decreased since I took office by about $7,000 um, as a net. Um, just a few current challenges for my office is just staying on top of project management and initiative support to not only staff, committees, and community partners as well. Uh, we have seen an increase of general cost with inflation when it comes to mailings, constituent responses, office supplies, and membership related costs as well too. Um, I have a generally relatively new staff, uh, you know, one person, uh, but just making sure that we're providing her with the trainings and the tools that she needs to not only support staff, uh, but also um, internal communications as well. Um, my office budget is just asking for an overall increase of $900, uh, just split in generally about 300 um, increases, uh, $300 increases in certain line items. Um, I have a printer that is kind of extended its warranty 
as well, but it's still working. So that's uh, good budgetary news as well, but no additional requests for me. Do we have any questions for the mayor? Otherwise, I'll just jump into the administrator. Director Krieger put this together. We have one uh, question. We have a question from Alder Kowicki oh, Pineski. Thank you. I don't know if it would be mayor or if it would be city administrator, but back in 2019, there was a community group that uh, recommended very strongly that the city have a full-time communications director. Have you given some thought to that? Oh, of course we've given it some thought to that. Um, so as uh, Director Krieger said too, so we had our department head workshop uh, a couple days back and this item was discussed with departments. Now from a department head level, we understand that yes, obviously if we could wave a magic wand, we'd wanna increase communications and improve it all across the board. Um, however, from an internal conversation with department heads, we, meaning the department heads, have a lot bigger priorities that we'd like to present the council with and talk through in terms of functioning as the city and making sure that we can continue to provide good services as well. Thank you. Any other questions? All right, we'll move right on to say administrator. All right, administrator budget is staying flat. There are no additional known increases. Um, obviously, some of the challenges we have, uh, we'll be doing some transition. Uh, Casey Bradley will be starting in a couple weeks. Um, right out of the gate, uh, he'll be working on uh, the strategic plan, budget finalization, as well as hiring across the city, but making sure that we can get him connected um, with all of our department head staff leading projects and continue to move forward. Um, I guess you'll hear this a lot tonight by no surprise, uh, just the general increased cost across the board with inflation uh, to do business. So that budget's remaining flat. Any questions for Mayor Sorensen about the administrator budget? Seeing none. Cool. All right. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Uh, we will move right on to city development. We will have our brand new city planning director, Director uh, McGinnis Casey, present. Good evening, everyone. And thank you. I know all your answers. <laughs> but we'll do the best we can for six days on the job. So, um, some of the things that uh, we're experiencing for some of our current challenges is number one, our website and just the ability for staff to maintain that website. Um, it should be our forward first thing that people as they come to our city likely are looking at and our website is very outdated and could use a lot of assistance making sure that we're being transparent to the public and just being a good resource. And we too are dealing with some staff um, and personnel changes so that always brings its share of some challenges. Uh, some of our future challenges, as I understand the building permit application was built really, really quickly during the pandemic or at the beginning of the pandemic and it's not sustainable. And so we need to look at what we can do there to have a more sustainable um, application process as well as implementing an online system to take payments. So as it stands right now, everybody has to come in and pay, you know, in person and pay and so we could gain a lot of efficiencies and staff time to do more productive things and um, be out in the field more if we had the ability to collect payment um, electronically. As well as um, one of the things that I have one concern about is just capacity overall and maximizing grant opportunities. And so we know that there's a lot of potential funding opportunities, but having staff and capacity to look for all of those opportunities and maximize our our opportunities here in Sheboygan to get our fair share because it's at the end of the day, if we're talking state and federal grants, it's you and I's taxes that's paying for those. And we wanna capitalize on those. And finally, hurdles really is cross-training, having opportunity and time to cross-train and succession planning. And as I stand here tonight before you, six days on the job, there are a lot of things that I can't find because we haven't done a good job in taking the time sometimes in the day to really document what we do. And so that's always a challenge. Um, and then we just have a lot of policies, procedures, and plans that are outdated. And um, one of the things that Mayor and I've talked extensively about is the comprehensive plan that we'll be really working on here soon. But just in general, as I've looked at policies, um, there's a large opportunity for us to be putting some efforts into updating those as well. So some of our known increases um, for the development side, um, employment, um, employee development, some increases for co conferences and memberships. It's how our, our staff stays current. 
um, vehicles and parking expenses. So $150 increase in parking stall rental fees and tools and equipments, again, as other departments have already talked about, that IT replacement schedule to keep all of our technology up to date. Uh, the development department has no, no, no additional requests. On the building inspector side, and as you can see, I've lumped together our challenges <laughs> all in one, so I didn't separate these out by, by the two different areas, but for known increases for inspections, uh, vehicle and parking expenses, as we all know, those field charges continue to go up, and so we need to make sure we're budgeting appropriately for that, and then um, increase for the motor vehicle service fund. And no additional requests on the building side either. Do we have any questions for Director McGinnis Casey? Thank you. Seeing none, all right, thank you. We will have the city attorney with Attorney Adams. <laughs> all right, um, first of all, talking about our challenges. Um, and the primary challenge that we really deal with is our workload. Um, workload has increased tremendously over the years. Uh, and not only is the workload increasing, but the rate of increase of workload is increasing as well. So every year we have a lot more uh, to, the, to that increase. We've done some things uh, over the last uh, couple of years. Uh, we've purchased some software to help with that, and, and that does help. Uh, but it doesn't necessarily solve the problem. It's also led to some concerns of, of burnout uh, among my staff. I'm, I'm frankly a little concerned that continuing at the level that we're at, we will probably lose some, some staff because of that. Uh, legislative changes as well uh, mean that a lot of the systems and processes that are in place now for the city have had to change, and our office generally is in the front line of assisting departments to to look at those processes and understand those changes. So that, that's an ongoing thing. And then the, the heavy workload has really meant, there's a couple of things that really I think our department should be doing that is not really happening currently in the way that it should be. First is longer term strategic planning on, on the legal side, and second of all, public outreach. At this point, neither of those things is really happening. And frankly, I think especially the first, but also the second, uh, are really key aspects that our department should be uh, doing, and we just have not been able to do that because of, of the workload. So looking at known increases, uh, there are four items, and almost like 95% of it is just one thing, and that's contracted services. So uh, LawView is the software that we are using for matter management, uh, and uh, what you, you may be aware of is that a couple of years ago, we did get an increase in our budget uh, to purchase uh, software. We originally purchased a software program called City Law. Unfortunately, at the same time that we purchased City Law, uh, the company that owns City Law decided to move from an on-site based program to a cloud based program. And um, I think it's fair to say they were highly unsuccessful uh, and we had to fire City Law. Um, they just were not doing the work. So then uh, we moved to this new company, LawView. Uh, there are some nice uh, things that happen because of LawView, including the fact that we now have a way for, other depart for all the department heads and some key staff in those departments to actually use the LawView software to communicate back and forth, to provide us information about requests that they're making, and to communicate back and forth about those requests. So it has been uh, it, it's been a good uh, program. Unfortunately, it's fairly expensive, uh, and the cost for this year will be almost 25,000 more uh, than the, the previous city law software was. There are a couple of uh, small uh, changes as well. Witness fees, uh, it's just a small increase based on 2023 projections. I think what had happened is in 21 and 22, uh, a lot more people were appearing uh, remotely, uh, and we don't pay witness fees to people who just appear on Zoom, uh, and now people are actually showing up uh, to court, which, by the way, is what we want, because when our witnesses are on Zoom, it's 
it's not good. Um, we, we need to have our witnesses in person. So that's $150. Uh, employee development, uh, this is our fees in IMLA, uh, which is the International Municipal Lawyers Association, our fees in the uh, county and state bar, um, and some conferences as well. Uh, those have all increased. Our uh, membership in the Municipal Attorneys Institute for the state has stayed flat for this year. So the total uh, for our membership is 867 as an increase. And then the increase in parking stall rental fees that I think you'll see from department to department as well, that's just an increase of $360. We do have one additional request. Uh, so currently in our table of organization, we have two full-time attorneys and a four-tenths part-time attorney. Uh, now that person has not been working with us this year because we used that to pay for the switch over from city law uh, to law view, uh, but we are requesting that that person be moved from part-time to full-time beginning in 2024. Uh, the cost, that, that number there of 82,000 includes the increase in salaries and benefits, uh, the increase in employee development and uh, annual county and state bar fees. We did not, oh, oh sorry, there we go. Uh, the, the, when it was a part-time position, there, was no, there were no benefits and uh, we did not pay for any kind of employee development or any of the bar dues, uh, so that, that would increase there. Th there is the please note there uh, that future funding requirements are ongoing. Uh, so a couple of things uh, to note, uh, we, what we did when we came up with this number is we looked at the current, um, in the table of organization right now, we just have uh, an assistant city attorney line item. Uh, my plan actually in hopes to drop this number a little bit is we are looking at creating a second category. We would rename the assistant city attorney, that, that, li that position that Liz holds, we'd call her the deputy city attorney, she'd stay uh, in the category that she is, and we'd recreate a category for an assistant city attorney with somewhat less responsibility than the deputy, um, with the idea that with somewhat less responsibility, it would be a somewhat smaller pay range. Of course, we don't know exactly where that will turn out, because if you, you know, if the person that we hire comes in with all sorts of experience, even if they're lower on the pay range, they may be higher, and somebody in the other pay range who comes in really low might be lower, but we do hope to uh, decrease some costs uh, by doing that. But in essence, it is uh, to um, have a person who can um, uh, to turn that point four person to a full time. Their primary responsibilities as we see them would be uh, prosecution, uh, but taking over all of the prosecution. Uh, right now we're sort of dividing prosecution among different people in the office, so that the, the prior prosecutor did not do much with building inspection. We're gonna make sure that, that our prosecutor is also expert in code uh, building inspection type things. Um, we would also move a number of the issues around claims um, and some of the issues around licensing uh, to, to that person basically to open up time for uh, the rest of us to work on some of the other things that, that we need to do to keep up on. Any questions? Alder Perella. I'm just confused about that additional assistant um, city attorney that you mentioned, that you make, uh, did I understand correctly, that you may want to create that in future, but you did not reflect it right now? So we want to include it. So that's, that's that increased amount We're from moving that person from being a part-time to a full-time, right? So that, and that number reflects the current wage scale but we are looking at creating a separate wage scale for that person with somewhat lower responsibilities that we hope that would actually reduce that 84,000 to something a little bit less, but we just don't know that at that time. The only way to estimate is to use the current, um, the current wage scale. So it is still, just to confirm, that's just the increase from the PT to the full-time. From right. the part-time to the full-time. From the part-time to the full-time. That's the only thing that you're asking That's for right now, as far as the, okay, thank yeah. you. Alrighty, uh, Alder Filicki Um what, what does public outreach mean from city attorney's office? 
So I think it means a couple of things. Uh, first of all, we do get a lot of sort of standard requests for information uh, for sort of legal issues around the city. And in recent years, we've had to sort of push those off. Um, not, we, we may answer them as they come in, but we haven't done anything sort of big picture uh, to make sure that people have answers to those questions. So as, as an example, today uh, we had someone who came in to ask about the process uh, for trying to get a refund on their um, wheel tax because they believed they paid it improperly. Ideally, we would already have sort of a, a, a how-to and, and some worksheets and things that, that people can do to explain. In this case, it's who to talk to at the DMV, uh, what, what are the, you know, what will they even consider, um, and, and those kinds of details. Uh, and so it's those kinds of things where people may have questions about very common legal issues rather than just having them email us and maybe we'll get to them, you know, at some point or having them call and leave voicemails and maybe we'll get to them at some point. Um, this would be a way of being more proactive about that. So, so it's interaction between your office and the citizens in the community. Yes. Thank you. Alder Salazar. Um, so she answered the, my first question. And then my second question was um, specifically about the position. There is nobody currently in the part-time position, correct? That does that position does not exist. That. Or, but, well, it exists, it is in the table of organization, but there is no one filling the position at the moment. When the prior- So it's a vacant position right now. It's a vacant position right now. And when the asking, person retired, mm -hmm. we did not refill that position. Um, in basically to pay for LawView. So now you're asking to increase of the 24 with LawView of the increase that's on that and moving this part-time to full-time for a f position. Right. Okay. So the funds that were used for the vacant position, you're, n you're now saying those are separate. You won't, you'll be spending more and asking for another person. Yeah. So okay. the, the amount that we paid, the, you know, the increase in law view, we had, we would have had some of that money. The cost of the part-time attorney was greater than 24,000, but yeah, so it's, it's maybe not an overall increase by 24 plus 80, whatever. But, okay, yeah. makes sense. Great, thank you. All right, Alder Decker. Thank you, Chair. Um, I guess my question about it is, um, would this also then be a reduction in contracted services for like a de like, like for like development agreements? Is there going to be some reduction in some of that? Can you reflect that at all, or not really? You can't really yeah. quantify it. We we really can't quantify that because we do. <clears throat> Over the last eight years, we've really worked hard to reduce how often we're going uh, out, outside for counsel. And we have. We've, we've mm -hmm. significantly reduced that over the years. And that's one of the reasons why there's been an increased workload on, on us internally. Um, I don't anticipate that we would be able to say, oh, it's, it's going to be this amount less. But mm -hmm. it would, it does mean that in certain cases where we might have to go outside, um, we wouldn't necessarily have to do that. Okay. But we can't quantify it. Okay, thanks. Any other questions? Seeing none, thank you. Uh, Attorney Adams. We'll now have IT and cable director and our information director uh, Bushman. Good evening. Let's see if I can even work the remote. <laughs> okay, so um, current and upcoming challenges. Um, obviously, continued investigation of. Oh, sorry. Uh, current and upcoming challenges. Continued invest investigation, implementation of cybersecurity solutions. Uh, so far, the council has been fantastic in helping us fund a lot of new solutions, but it's going to be an ongoing journey um, with probably no end in sight. So that is uh, definitely one of our concerns. Also, over the next two to five years, the city will need to switch from on-premise solutions to cloud-based solutions such as Microsoft Office 365, which will increase our operational expenses. So typically in the past, 
when we went out and bought software and ran it on our hardware that was on-prem. When we needed to buy new hardware and software, we would take that out of the capital side. Um, with the cloud-based solutions, we'll have to come up with some new way of, of uh, funding that or financing that. That being said, since I've started uh, in 2019, one of the things I have been working on is increasing our budget to get to the point where we'll have enough in the operational expense side of the budget to pay for some of these cloud-based solutions that we know are gonna be coming down the road to us. And the third uh, concern is succession planning. I know you've heard that before, but uh, my crystal ball says over the next one to seven years, three of the five IT staff uh, may retire. And that's you know always a concern when you lose that knowledge um, and how do we plan the succession for that? Okay. So going through through the changes in the budget, um, you know, contracted service is eighty dollars. Um, employee development going up slightly to six ninety. The phones and internet. Um, some of that is just a natural increase that we see year over year for. Uh, typically they're increasing, you know, somewhere in the three to five percent range for those services. Uh, computer maintenance cost is going up $9,600. Part of that reason is in 2018 and 2019, we refreshed a lot of our hardware technology. And when we did that, we purchased five years of maintenance. That maintenance, five-year maintenance contract is expiring, so now we need to go to uh, up, uh, new maintenance contracts. And then software maintenance is going up uh, 20,230. Um, part of that is just an annual increase. We see somewhere in the five to 7% for our software expenses. But this also includes uh, $15,000 for the new HeyGov um, uh, cloud application that we just recently purchased to support DPWs, park rentals, boat slip rentals, as well as the clerk's licensing. We do not have any additional requests at this time. Do we have any questions for Director Bushman? Alder Felicki Pineski. Thank you. You mentioned the Hague of software that is or is not included in this software increase? It is included in the 20,000 software increase. It is. It is, and that was roughly 15,000, or it is $15,000 a year to, for that. Um, we did offset by going with the Hague of solution, we were able to eliminate some of the other support maintenance we were paying for applications that we're not gonna use any longer. This is what Finance Committee talked about? Yes. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you. Alder Perella. Those $9,600 for maintenance, is that something only for 2024? Because you mentioned the five years agreement and... Right. <laughs> we'll probably see that increase reoccurring every year into the future. You know, because we are gonna need to, typically we won't buy another five year maintenance agreement. Typically we're looking at running the hardware five to eight years. So at some point we'll go with a capital request to replace that. And typically when we do the capital request, we'll also build in a five year maintenance to it. So that is not 45 years, those 9,006, sorry for my ignorance. Right. I have no yeah. idea how much they cost. So that's, is that that's, just for a year? That's for one year. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. All right, any other questions? Seeing none, thank you, All Director right. Bushman. We'll go on the cable TV next. So in, in the cable TV budget, um, no one expenses here. Uh, the vehicle and parking expense is going up $200 and then uh, the phones uh, is going up $698. No questions on that. Um, 
the additional request, we are asking the council to approve uh, basically a, a $7,000 increase in temporary salaries. And what we'd like to use that additional funding for is um, to start rebroadcasting the local high school and Lakeland College some of their sporting events. Uh, the last time we did this was the 2018 into 2019 basketball season. Then we discontinued that and then COVID hit. But um, we, we, it was our, our most popular uh, watched uh, broadcasting from the cable television perspective. Um, so we're, we're looking for you know, roughly $7,000 to bring that back. And typically that's gonna be about 30, 30 sporting events. It covers you know, basketball, football, some softball, some baseball. Randy. Alder Felicki Paneski. Thank you. So the city is going to foot the bill to broadcast sporting events for the school systems? That is correct. Hmm. Thank you. <laughs> Alder Perella. I was going to say I approve it only if you broadcast soccer as well. <laughs> <laughs> Scott? <laughs> <laughs> Alder Ramey. Well, I understand it was the most um, popular thing watched had, uh, uh, since COVID or now that we're in a, in a way out of it. Um, have you been getting a lot of requests? Is that something the community wants? Scott, I'm, I'm gonna let Scott jump in here because he deals with that side of uh, the production if you can, Scott. Yes, we have been getting uh, re requests or questions. Um, I may be more accurate. Um, hey, I sure miss, why isn't this on? Why, why don't you do this anymore? And um, so, so I guess that's sort of a request. Um, at, at least that's, that's the way the, the calls and emails and feedback has been coming in. So it, it is missed by the community. All right, Alder Decker. <laughs> so, when you do this, do you work with the school district? I mean, like the like the, like the, like their their broadcast um, classes and stuff like that, so that some of their students do some of this, or is this just our people doing it? Once again, I'll defer to Scott since he's <laughs> the one that was around when we did it before. It's primarily our people, but uh, we certainly encourage student involvement and have worked with uh, students before. Okay. Getting them scheduled is, is a challenge um, just because of their availability. They're very busy. Many of them are involved in the sporting activities that we're covering, so they can't be on the field and running camera. So, okay. Uh, but yes, we, we do work with the school district. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Seeing none. Th thank thank you. you. All right. The presentation we've all been waiting for, Director Beeble with Public Works. <laughs> you want to take a break or stand up and stretch before I start talking? I'll try to be brief. Um, I'll keep it under, th yeah, I'll keep it under three hours. <laughs> no. Um, this is a very important um, evening. This is a great opportunity for a good dialogue like this in the community of the whole process to actually have the entire council present for budget discussions and feedback versus just maybe just the standing committee or, or staff in the past. So um, it's, been, it's been a nice, a nice process. So I'm gonna start with something I think that is fairly easy and it's the wastewater treatment plant because this has zero impact on the tax levy or in the general budget. It's funded all through the fees at the wastewater plant. Now, it's a very extremely important function of public works in our community providing water quality and cleanliness for our, our, our sewage. 
But there's quite a bit of challenges that we're dealing with, uh, as you will see, mainly the increased costs in chemicals. It's a significant increase since uh, the pandemic and moving forward. Some of the other challenges at the plant, the plant is roughly a little over 40 years old, and uh, it has, over the years, had significant process upgrades, but yet there's some age starting to show. And some of the issues are the poor grit and rag removal uh, at the head of the plant as the sewage comes into the plant, and it has an effect on the aeration basins, the sludge storage silos, the digesters and pumps. This type of material, the more grit and, and junk that you have, if it gets into the system, it just causes problems. So the staff is constantly dealing with this. When we talk about upgrades, that will be in the capital improvement is what we're gonna deal with that. But tonight, just wanted to give you a background in terms of operationally. We're also catching up on efforts that were delayed by the vacancy of our process systems integrator. Basically, this position was a uh, micro technician that did a lot of our PLC programming and network engineering for all of the computer systems at the plant for so the plant could have good diagnostics and SCADA systems to provide monitoring and, and set points on certain, certain activities that are important to be monitored. We talked a little bit about the aeration tonight with the new blowers, it's been an issue, but also in with that, just besides the blowers of themselves, we're looking at some of the functionality of the basins and adding the, the dissolved oxygen back in for the, the water. The, we have an old digester complex from the original plant that was built in the roughly the 50s. They're no longer in use and they're vacant and they're, um, basically falling apart and it could be space eventually for future long range planning, what can we do there? You've heard it all night and you're gonna hear it a lot in public works, succession planning. So wastewater treatment, we're talking about some succession planning. When we get to our additional requests, you'll, you'll, you'll have an understanding about that. And I'll, lastly, this has been an ongoing throughout my whole tenure. We know that our, our Agreements, the plant is owned and operated by the city of Sheboygan, but it's a regional plant. We serve the region via contract. So we serve the village of Kohler, city of Falls, town of, town of Wilson, town of Sheboygan, all via contracts. Those contracts were originally agreed to in 1975 with no end date. And they're not in the most uh, advantageous position of the city. So there's always been, how do we restructure? How do we get through that? Well, we're working on some processes and in there's a new plan update for 2050. And during that process, all of those parties will be at the table and there will be a great opportunity to start that dialogue and how do we make the overall agreements fair for all communities. Ooh, wrong direction. So hopefully you'll be able to see some of these going right through what is the known budget increases at wastewater. Again, funded through their wastewater rates. We're seeing an increased cost in consulting services. Uh, Bay Lakes Regional Planning, for instance, they're doing the 2050 long range sewer service area plan. We have other engineering services on our interceptor sewer project along the lakeshore that's ongoing. So that's going to looking at about an increase of $40,000 in the 2024 budget. Here we go with the chemical costs. There's an additional cost of $240,000. So the quantities have been pretty consistent. So we're not increasing quantities and using more chemicals. It's just the cost of the chemical itself. For instance, 23% increase for bleach, 8% for sodium bisulfate, which is used to remove the bleach. And then 79% increase for ferric chloride. That's, that's a flock that helps um, attach the solids to the, to the wastewater as well as polymer for when we use in, in the drying process of the sludge. These are significant increases and we're very limited in terms of suppliers. So it's not like we can go shopping around. These, these are very specific types of chemicals that are used in, in, a, in a very unique industry, wastewater treatment. So the next two are utility and the 5% is Additional request, and that's per, per the budget uh, guidelines that we've talked about. $120 for phones, 
Contracted services, this is with uh, another contract with Donahue and Associates to again, we need to study those aeration basins, even though we're looking at new blowers, how are they positioned? How are the diffusers uh, operating to their highest and best, most efficient capacity? So we're not adding too much oxygen in the evening when there's not a lot of demand, but during the day when it is needed, they can ramp up. And how does that, how does we put uh, the control systems in to, to better manage that. I mentioned the, the building is, the plant is over 40 years old. So we're, we're seeing every year increased building maintenance items, as well as the cost of building maintenance and, and, and supplies. So we're looking at around a $77,000 increase just in terms of the building maintenance repair. Uh, some of these um, items could be moved maybe into a capital outlay and what that would mean is it would be a one-time expense. So it wouldn't necessarily be an ongoing expense. So we're gonna look at that and try to adjust that accordingly through this process. We have an, a copier lease and that is increasing for next year. Uh, we talked about the IT service fund, Eric's department. So we gotta pay him so he can maintain his system and keep it up to date for us. So total, overall increase of about $456,000 in our operating budget. And our operating budget is roughly right around, I'd say eight to eight and a half million dollars on an annual basis at the plant. Any questions about wastewater operations at this stage before I move on to the? Alder Felicki Pineski. Thank you. Uh, I'm looking at the budget line building maintenance and repair non-outlay items moved from 651700. So is it a new item or it just showed up in this budget and it came out of another budget? I mean, if, if you mind, I'm gonna have Jordan from Wastewater. He's got a little bit more detail in terms of what he moved from that line item. Thank you. That's a great question. So if you happen to look at the account number that's listed there, that 651700, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. that's actually also listed as a separate line item at the very bottom of the screen. Um, essentially, that is an outlay or a capital type line item. So I checked with Director Krieger um, a couple weeks ago about just what kind of expenses should be included in that. And she advised me that some of the things that I had planned to include in that outlay account really should be up in our operating expenses. And so the four um, items that I list um, there in the, in the light item that you're referring to, switchgear testing, you know, that's not really purchasing a large piece of equipment. Digester cleaning, same thing, it's, it's more of a service than a, a purchase. And then dryer belts and wipers, those are more maybe annual purchases that we make, not a, not a one-time purchase. And so essentially, um, based on that advice, instead of including those um, purchases down in that last line item, I move them up to that operating expense line and that's where the increase in 77,000 came in. So I'm, I'm still not understanding The 77,000 would normally have or formerly been included in other operating? Correct, it would have increased that um, increase on the bottom line item there. So there is an increase? Yes. Thank you. Any other questions? Alrighty. Excellent. The other items is, as we mentioned, are, are outlay and part of capital improvements and we'll be talking that at a future meeting. So the additional requests that we're looking for at at the wastewater treatment plant deal with succession and reorganization in terms of preparing for the future. We have uh, currently uh, two mechanics and uh, a one, one lead mechanic or a foreman in the area. Uh, several of we, two of them are approaching retirement age within the next year and uh, Given the complexity and the amount, the amount of enormity in terms of this plant in and of itself, we're looking to bring on a fourth mechanic. 
and that's what's being proposed. The fourth mechanic would work side by side through a training program, learning the operations, understanding all the new nuances with operating and maintaining the plant with, with the more senior mechanics. When the retirement occurs, we're not looking to backfill. This would, per position would just move and it would not be, uh, we would not stay at the four mechanics. We would then go back to the original three, but it's a, an, an opportunity for the mechanic to overlap with the more senior staff that they can partner with them in parallel, learn on the job while they're still um, operating together. So that's what that proposal is. And that's why we're looking at, you know, this is about four to five months we're anticipating. We have nothing um, that I would say is, is verified anything in terms, but there is a potential for someone to retire next year that we're anticipating. And again, this increase in terms of the budget is totally funded at wastewater. This does not hit our general fund. So that's what this position would be for. Any questions with that? All right, moving on. We're gonna go right into the streets and sanitation division next. This division is funded primarily through the general fund. However, there are some components that when I get to them, I will explain are not. But uh, this is one of the, the largest divisions in, in the Department of Public Works um, in terms of labor, resources, equipment, and so forth. Uh, and it's the department, as you will hear over and over again, we've been challenged with our resources and, and, and the limitations that we are faced with. And this is limitation in terms of the ability to purchase the necessary materials and supplies in order for us to do our work, as well as maintain and keep our equipment operating. And lastly, the labor forces that we have. Uh, you'll hear again succession planning, and now you'll see that I have some positions that I'm going to be adding, um, or requesting to be added. And I just, for context, in, in my tenure here, I think at one point during my tenure, and I've been here since 1987, hate to throw that year out, but uh, I think we were at a high during my tenure right around almost 150 employees in the Department of Public Works. Um, as of more recently, in, when 2010 came through in Act 10, we are roughly right around 130. And as of today, we're at 100. All the while, I think you've all experienced the city has grown. We've added new areas to the city, parks, streets, lights, utilities, so forth. So it's been a challenge. Uh, it's been a testament to the department and the labor that we have. We've been able through the, over these years, acquire what I would say a, a, a skill set that is multi-skilled and not um, basically a division of labor where one person's only doing one thing, they're multi-skilled, so we're, we have the flexibility to move staff around, which has helped, as well as the equipment that we've been purchasing over the year has increased productivity. So even though we have less employees today versus where we've been, we've been able to really meet a lot of the demands, but we're at a critical juncture that it's not sustainable and we're going to be, you're going to see through this budget presentation that we're actually starting to do less and it's doing it's becoming more and more apparent with the inflation factors that you're going to be seeing so in other words um, with with the staff being frozen and kind of where we at where we've been at you're you're going to see that overtime is increased well we have more work to get done with the same amount of labor, but it's gonna take more hours. So we're increasing our overtime to meet the, the demands, street repairs, sewer repairs, so forth. All of this is becoming more and more uh, apparent and what we've been need, needed to do is add overtime. Now, overtime's not a bad thing. It doesn't add uh, pers personnel and it, you don't pay extra benefits in terms of health benefits on, on, on overtime. So you're getting increased productivity 
but you're not paying some of those additional fringe benefits necessarily. So although, although you see it, 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 it's a positive in terms of uh, we're able to meet some of the productivity. Clothing allowance, that's a $700 uh, increase. Contracted services, this is a big one. In the streets department, we contract out some of our, our work. We're not able, we don't have the equipment. Probably the biggest thing is milling the asphalt. Uh, a new asphalt mill is about a million dollar piece of equipment. We're not gonna buy one. We can't justify it. It's used maybe two or three times a year. We contract that out, but we're it's limited in terms of who the contractor is and at their mercy of their time. So sometimes we'll mill a street and it will be like that for several months just because the contractor is available and we have to be take it when it's available. But those costs have increased significantly. We've seen a 20% increase in their contracted rate since 2021. So therefore you see the $49,000 increase. Again, traffic, uh, this is a contracted service for our traffic division within streets. That was with, we contract with the county highway department to do our line striping with their line striper. There's a 5% annual contractual increase with our disposal contract with GFL. You'll see that in several different items. So that's a $2,500 increase. Motor vehicle fund. This is a, a charge that we charge ourselves internally to fund the motor vehicle division. Very similar to the IT department. IT department has a charge that we're charging other departments for their services. We charge ourselves a motor vehicle fee for the vehicles, the maintenance on them, and the fuel. So that's, that's been contractually by budget instructions, we've been increasing that about two and a half percent on an annual basis. Traffic control supplies, this could be uh, anything from street signs such as the vinyl to make the signs to, st to stick on the aluminum. The vinyl has increased 64% since 2020. Sign blanks, the aluminum, 61% since 2020. Construction materials, this is the big, big area in our streets. Asphalt, concrete, uh, asphalt alone, uh, 36% increase since 2021. And that's, and we buy a lot just through the county. That's the county's increase. When we have to buy contractually, it's over 40, or over 40, approaching 50% increase. So $52,500 increase in that line item. Uh, $500 for increased uh, supplies, minimal amount. Utilities, again, contract, uh, by the budget, we're increasing them 5% for $875. Uh, some tools and equipment increased to talk about cost inflationary trends of about 1,000. So all, overall, just for the streets, streets division area, we're looking at $153,000 increase over 2023's budget. Question about streets and street repairs. All their cells are. I don't have a question specifically on this spreadsheet, but what I, I'm having a hard time following, we, we've been seeing sort of what the previous year is based on what your increase is. And so right now you're showing the amounts on the second column and then on the third column it's saying revised totals. Yeah and the totals don't even match. So yeah. is, this, is that the, what you spent in so, 2023? So what, what we did is I, I have the amount that we originally requested, then we had a department head meeting, we talked about this sure. internally. We revised some of these figures. So originally we came in with 165. Yeah. We, we're now adjusted it downward, we're at 153,000. So where, where are your 23 numbers at then? How can I see those? Because um, that's important for us to understand what the increase is based sure. on what you spent the previous year, what you're requesting now. I, I don't have it on this spreadsheet, but I'm happy to share with you, for instance, uh, contracted services, that line item, for instance, we're increasing 49,000. So can you, in, can you in, compile that for us and send yes, it out to the alders? By all I think means. most of you have sent us, right? Am I reading it correctly that the previous columns were that yep. you've showed us 23 and then what would the increase was, correct? By all means. Great, I'd appreciate that, thank yep. you. Because like for, for the current year budget for construction materials, it's at 200,000. Yeah. So we're going up 50. 
Yeah, that's that's important yep. to see that so we can sort of understand because understand I mean, the first column. I'm like, I'm, I'm not sure. Now, I have a, I have that spreadsheet here. It's not in the presentation, but okay. yes, we will forward all that information to you. It's a good. I would I would agree for for contextual purposes to compare. So additional needs. So here we talk about succession planning within the streets division. So what I what is being proposed here is a, approximately about a fifteen thousand dollar increase in salaries. And what it would do is we, we would take three existing positions within our current table of organization, mainly maintenance workers, and upgrade them to two equipment operators, which would mainly be our equipment operators are masons or more skilled level type of uh, work that is needed in the, in the field for street repair, as well as one heavy equipment operator position. These would be upgrades. And the purpose of upgrading is, is that these are senior, senior level positions. And again, we need to train and work side by side with the senior level to create a succession plan. Too often we have our more senior skilled employees get on to be an equipment operator, heavy equipment operator, and within four to five years they retire, and then it sets us back because we don't have that skill set anymore. We have to retrain. We want to train side by side and create these positions so that we have the ability to train with them as well as then flexibility to move crews around. Too often when we only have two masons, we only can have two, two jobs going at the same time. By adding two more masons, we're adding additional capacity to do more jobs and, and stay up with the work. So that's what this, this proposal is doing. It's not creating any new positions, it's upgrading their level and creating that succession to train and get them to the higher skill set that we're gonna be needing in the future. All right. The next section is additional needs, again, for streets. But these I, I, I've highlighted differently because they, these are one-time expenses that aren't going to be necessarily hitting. They have an opportunity to maybe be funded through other, other means within the budget and not necessarily with the tax levy. So for instance, on in the upper right corner, we, the first one is a concrete saw, 45,000. We're looking at a programmable message board for traffic control and, and road closures, and it can be used for special events and other things as it's programmable to change the message. That's a $25,000 uh, additional request. Lastly, we show in the bottom there is a trailer that would be used to um, better move our tracked skid steer loader um, from job site to job site. We have. It's, it's available now, uh, it, 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 we have used a different trailer, but it's, that trailer is used for another department on a routine basis, so it's not readily available to, to be used on a, on a consistent basis. The other two are low, low uh, priorities, it would be a ditching bucket and a tooth bucket, but there's potentially right there 120,000 that's part of the budget request, that if it's moved potentially with, uh, as an outlay, that it wouldn't be a recurring cost and it could be uh, an opportunity to, to help with the overall budget. Oh, all there, Decker. Um, on the electronic message board, is this something that we sometimes contract out to like rent or in other cases, is this, would this be a cost savings eventually if we, over over time, is, this, is there, how, do you have a kind of an amount of how much in a year, you, you, you do you rent something like this? Yeah, we, we, we rent these routinely on large capital projects. And other projects we have, we had one board that is, well, probably of over 20 years. It's very difficult to program and it's not reliable. But yes, this would help reduce some of that, that contracted. In other words, renting it as well as it gives us a little better, quicker flexibility in terms of a project where we have a road closed and it's pretty, for an emergency case or something, it gives us the ability to put it out and deploy it right away. Okay. 
Other known budget increases within the streets and sanitation. Sorry, oh, hold on. That's okay. Hold on, we have more. Right at that, hold on, hold on. Nope, Pro. Roberta Flicky Pineski got first. <laughs> Great, Calder Flicky thank you. Thank you. Um, this is a lot of numbers and it's a lot of comparison and it's a lot of items. Can you give us a ballpark estimate about how much you, you lease and rent equipment as you need it versus we own it? Do, do you have a comparison? I, I think we, we can get a, a, a pretty good number on that. Uh, Rick is here from Motor Vehicle. We do lease some, some vehicles. I mean, all of our pickup trucks and small equipment is leased. We, we also, some of the specialty equipment, it's under contract. So when we contract, let's say when I mentioned the mill, uh, that's a, it's on a contractual basis. So although we're renting that piece of equipment, it comes with an operator as well. So it's kind of an all in one. Uh, other equipment that we've 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 leased over the years is in, in additional um, circumstances. So we could provide a breakdown on that. I'm I'm looking at it in terms of do you have a handle on where the cost savings are for leasing, contracting, owning, and and there's a fine line between providing the services you provide and the cost of providing them. Do, do you have? Yes, we do. We routinely, we routinely will look at the cost benefit on if, if it makes sense to purchase this piece of equipment, what, how often it's going to be used, what's its value versus leasing it. And leasing, we're, we're, term, we're finding that it's not always uh, as lucrative or as advantageous, especially for some of the specialty equipment we have, just the financing and the leasing options with, with that. So in a lot of cases, what we'll do is uh, we'll rent, we'll, we'll, because it's used on a limited basis and we know it's, it's not gonna be a recurring, ongoing, right. needed. So yes, we, we have a, we'll, we'll go through a process and we'll re review that. Thank you. Alrighty, Alder Prella. I was just confused about uh, those three positions that you want to promote. Um, you would not replace those. So you would promote those position and positions without replacing them. That's correct. Okay, thank you. All righty, Alder Rainey. Um, so let's say we had all of these, like this fleet of cool stuff. Is that an opportunity for income? Can we rent it out to other communities that don't own these things? We have, it, we, we will share, we, we have a kind of a cooperative agreement with the county highway department. Uh, for instance, they don't have a sewer vector. You'll see that, uh, there'll be a picture of that piece of equipment. Uh, it's a pretty specialized equipment. It's used every day to clean sewers in the city of Sheboygan. The county doesn't never uh, really have a lot of sewers and so they'll contract with us as well as maybe the city of Falls and some other at times. We'll, for instance, street sweeping. Uh, not a lot of uh, opportunity with the county necessarily to have a vacuum type sweeper. They'll just have mechanical big broom sweepers because in the county they don't have curb and gutter. They don't have to pick up the debris. They can sweep it off. So there's opportunities that we've shared and gained some revenue. But most of the equipment that we have, it, it's used and it's used heavily and it's, and it's maintained and it's got a long life cycle. Much of our equipment's 15 years before we replace it. All right, some more budget increases just in streets and sanitation. Again, uh, storm water, storm sewer. Contracted services, we're looking at some additional co consulting fees with DNR required outfall testing. So that's going up $15,000 next year. Looking at the motor vehicle service fund, kind of mentioned it, it's an annual 2.5% two, two increase. Construction materials, looking at an 18% increase in co concrete costs from 21 for a $10,000 increase in this end. So storm sewer, 
uh, budget line item is increasing 27,875. Sanitation or garbage collection, again, GFL, our contract, automatic 5% increase next year. So that results in about a $15,000 increase in the budget. And again, 2.5% uh, increase for our motor vehicle charges for a total of 26,172 in that, in that budget. The next one is recycling. This one does not hit the general fund or the tax levy. This is an internal service fund. So when you, the recycling fund is funded through the recycling fee that is on your water, water bill. So we have some overtime in this line item and this is reflecting current trends within the sanitation division for recycling. Roughly a $20,000 increase there. Looking at our transfer station tipping again, this is our budget with GFL. That's 5% increase for 4,500 roughly. Equipment rental, this is where we lease when we got all the carts for the community and deployed them. We actually entered, instead of buying them outright, we were in a lease agreement with the company. So we're leasing those carts right now. So there's an annual lease payment that will be going up roughly around $5,000. And lastly, again, the motor vehicle fund, we're charging ourselves 2.5% increase. So recycling is increasing 35,292. Additional needs. Uh, this is up for uh, consideration. Currently, you know, the, the department, we do the neighborhood cleanup where we'll have dumpster day. We'll go to neighborhood associations. We'll bring the dumpster route. We'll bring a garbage truck. We have the neighborhood bring their bulky items to the neighborhood area and will collect it and dispose of it. Very popular. Uh, we get a lot of requests. Why don't you do that in my neighborhood or why aren't you doing it here? So what this proposal would be is an additional looking at four times that we would do something like this for the community at large at the service building. So. We wouldn't probably do it in the drop-off site because the drop-off site's kind of tight, but we would do it in the main parking lot on a Saturday and say, this Saturday we're doing bulky pickup, Br bring your couch, bring your chair, uh, large item, table, we're gonna take care of it for you. So that would be this proposal. So we're, it would be an additional needs request of 8,000 for the dumpsters and 4,000 for the overtime to do that four times a year for the community. So something to be considered. Alder Decker. Um, would this then be in place of or in, in addition to the neighborhood? This is currently proposed to be in addition to. Okay. Alrighty. Alder Salazar. Is there additional cost with having to get rid of those large items? Like that you're, you're assuming that all of this is in the 8,000? Yes. Okay, so you're anticipating that. That 8,000 would be. I mean, you're hoping be, that like, yeah. let's just say that 150 people participate and they all bring a couch and a table, yeah. you're assuming that the 8,000 is going to cover the couches and the tables for 150 people. Right. And again, this was budgeted for four times a year. So after the first one and it's like, wow, we might uh, underestimate it or we might only be able to do two of these this year and look at how this could be accommodated in the future for next year or uh, but yeah, we're anticipating this is would be because when, when we pay for the dumpster, it usually has the disposal fee built in with the rental of it as well. It. So that's what we're factoring this cost in. But you're right, it, this could be so popular that we could get overwhelmed. We may have to say, well, we only have enough in the budget for two times versus four. Mm -hmm. Alrighty. Other known uh, budget increases, again, this is now the sanitary sewer collection system, part of the Streets of Sanitation Division. So we talked about Jordan's plant. Now we're actually talking about the pipes in the street. The pipes in the street are maintained by the public work staff at the service building. Again, this, this section of the budget does not impact the general fund. It, it's funded solely through the wastewater rates. It's a big portion of the budget. Uh, we have over 170 miles of sanitary sewer, literally about 5,000 man, manholes for entry. Tremendous amount of infrastructure to maintain. 
So we're looking again, $50,000 increase in contracted services and that's, that's actually hiring contractors and specialized contractors, in other words, for um, with equipment or lining sewers, for instance. Types of repairs that we're not able to do in-house. Our locate services, so when you call Digger's Hotline to dig in your yard, we have to pay for it. We have to locate whatever is in the area. So we actually contract with a service that will locate our sewers, both sanitary storm, as well as our electrical lines. So we contract a service. So when you call Digger's Hotline, they get a ticket and say, I'm gonna be digging at 828 Center Avenue to plant a tree. You, got, you have to wait three days to make sure everything's marked. So what happens is that ticket gets called in and it goes to our contractor. We don't do it ourselves. And that contractor comes out and marks, the, marks whatever's in the area to say, it's not here, or you can dig here. Or don't dig here, there's a sewer line or whatever. Our current contractor is underperforming and probably uh, very soon will be no longer working for us. So we're anticipating next year, this new contractor that will be doing this will be an increased cost of a roughly around 10,000. IT service, that's for paying for Eric and his, and his computers. We, we love Eric, he does a great job with that stuff. Still there? You said you were gonna take off. Okay. <laughs> Uh, motor vehicle fund, again, two and a half percent increase uh, with that for our, the motor vehicles that are associated with this cost center. And lastly, get the construction materials to do the actual sewer repair. Again, and we've talked about the increased costs of, of uh, the materials that we're facing with. So this division's looking at about $118,500 increase. Additional needs, again, uh, we have some uh, opportunities within succession planning within this division. These are the two vector trucks. These are very specialized pieces of equipment. Hold this, on, direct, Director oh, Beeble. Yep. Alder Salazar has a question. I, I do. So we're, 58 is what you're, so if you go back to the last slide, this is page 58, but 50 is the wastewater. I'm just trying to understand how they're different from each other. Okay. So, I'm, so, I'm sorry, I'm not, yep, I'm not nope, following. That's okay. So the plant, Is we, it talked about, we talked about Jordan's plant. That's a okay. separate budget. Okay. He runs the plant now. So the administration is what? The administration would be in engineering of, of the sewer system. This is now the sewer system as well as administration of the collection system. All the pipes that are in, the, in, in, in our streets we manage those, the Department of Public Works San Sanitation. And those so, are traditionally separate budgets? It's a separate budget. Okay. It's funded though, again, through the wastewater rates. But it's managed, and in, in, it, all the management of the collection system is managed with the labor and the uh, uh, administration portion at the service building. Got the it. plant is with Jordan. Okay, thank you for clarifying that. Alder Filicki Pineski. Thank you, further clarification. The the sewers and the collection are not funded by general funds, they're funded by wastewater? Yes. Thank you. So when I talk about additional needs, these additional needs will be funded through the wastewater portion where we're talking next. And again, talking about a little succession planning here, we, have, we wanna reclassify one position within the table of organization to create basically another equipment operator for sewer division. This would help, right now we have a foreman in this division that is operating on a daily basis and not able to do much planning and foresight in, in terms of the next scheduling of activities in terms of maintenance, schedule, route jetting, cleaning, and so forth, responding to uh, um, citizen requests in terms of checking on, on complaints and issues. So this would help us take one of our existing maintenance workers and just move them up into a class grade to operate this piece of equipment again. Let's work side by side with one of the operators and help with that as well. The other position is actually creating a new full-time sewer operator position. 
Uh, this would be funded again through the wastewater rates. It, it, it doesn't hit the general fund. We have two trucks and it's a two, both, both trucks are two person crews. So what this would do is give us four labor type of positions to operate in the field with the foreman actually responding to sewer service requests and scheduling the work and operating in terms of getting materials and equipment in the next daily schedules and, and work forecasted for them. As I mentioned, that person is now operating on a daily basis and not able to meet much of the, the current backlog that we have in terms of citizen requests for sewer responses. So that total additional needs in this area equates to roughly around 80,000. Alder Flicky Pineski. Thank you. When we loan out our sewer vacuum cleaner to places that don't have as many sewer vacuums as we do, do we loan out our staff with the piece of equipment? We do, and a lot of times we'll do it on a Saturday or after hours so it doesn't impact our need. We want to make sure that it doesn't impact or disrupt our schedule. So our priority is first, and then we work with them to see when a good time is to accommodate their need. And, 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 and those needs aren't, aren't on a weekly basis by any means. They're no. more like on an annual basis, if anything. And those, those municipalities pay for our staff likewise? Yes, Thank we you. put in on a work order. Alder Perella. This is perhaps more of a finance 101, and so maybe Director Kruger, you can help also. Um, so when we say that projects are funded by, not the general fund, but by the rates, we mean the fees that we all pay for that service, right? So is there a, so there is a projection of those rates for 2024, I assume, or we, based that on the rates of 2023, correct? Yeah, that's correct, and, and they're, they're being developed as we speak, and we would hope th through this process within the next few weeks, we'll have a good projection on those rates based on these requests. So I assume that the rates, oh, so okay, you will tell us later what is the increase of those rates. I assume there have been, a, there is going to be an increase compared to the rates of 2023. If, if they, I, I'm not sure, it could be, I don't know, 10 to 15% increase, but those rates, so I would be interested in knowing how much, if, if we are going to spend only the increase in rates, how much of those rates, so how did we use it last year? How come we have those funds available this year? Is that just because of the rates increase or because there is, there are funds available from the rates of previous years? And again, I, I apologize for the simple question, just I don't, um, I'm not sure what do we have been doing with those funds. Do we have funds from previous year's rates that make those funds available? You want me to answer that? Uh, yes, they're, they're by, by law and by the DNR, we have to fund X amount for replacement of equipment at the plant. So like for earlier this evening, we used a equipment replacement fund to buy those blowers, in other words. So it's that's what we're drawing from. So, and it's because that plant is so important, these funds that are set aside are for just this purpose. So the rates do have excess capacity in them for to help have a fund balance for those types of needs as would, would be unanticipated as well as planned needs as well. We have, and as we will hear at another meeting, when we talk about the capital improvements, you'll see that we're gonna propose to use much of the fund balance in order to use that funds to, to make the planned improvements versus going out and increasing more rates to get more money or borrowing the money at the plant. So I, we're not anticipating uh, 
a, a large increase in the wastewater rate. Um, Jordan and I had that talk and our plan is to be fairly conservative and I, again, we're gonna adjust and start putting some of these numbers into the, there's a, we have a spreadsheet and it's called a rate tool that we go through. We wanna go through that with these numbers now and be able to come back to you. And I would think, and I don't wanna speculate because that rate tool is very complicated. So, but I, but I would not say it's gonna be anywhere like 10 or 15% increase. Even though you see some large numbers here, again, the overall wastewater budget, when you look at the plant, plus the administration and collection system, it's around a $10 million budget. So it's a, it's, it's a big budget. All right, Alder Decker. Thank you. Okay. Um, just a real quick question, I just want a clarification. So any kind of uh, improvements that we, or anything, anything increases that we do on this part of the budget, that also has to, um, any rate increases have to go through the Public Service Commission, correct? Not for wastewater. Oh, it doesn't, okay. We, 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 are, we are regulated under Public Service Commission, but the rates can be set locally okay. for wastewater. Director Kruger. There is an ordinance, I believe, that comes forward, though, for the rate uh, change to this to the council, so you would see that before the budget gets approved and those rate changes happen. Thank you. If, if there is enough, if there are enough balanced funds, we could also not increase. Potentially, there, there within in this budget, there are items in here that, for instance, if it's a one-time expense, some of the equipment and, and some of those items, those are eligible to use the fund balance. The fund balance can't be used for, let's say, operational or labor, so that becomes part of the operating budget, that's part of the rate that gets, so there's two components. We have the fixed charges and the variable charges within the budget, so um, I think when we get a little closer, when we have that calculated, we'll be able to pull those out and show you what is eligible to use the fund balance and that could help reduce, keep the rates low and what opportunities are going to be added to the rate, in other words. I mean, just to confirm, the operational expense expenditures of the wastewater facility are paid by, not by the general fund, but, right. but by the rates, correct? Correct. Okay, okay. Yep. Any other questions? All righty. All right, Public Works, Facilities and Traffic Division. Some of our current and upcoming challenges, especially in traffic, are the new rules of sign and traffic painting, reflectivity. Uh, it's resulting in increased frequency of painting as well as sign replacement. Uh, traffic signal and street lighting infrastructure upgrades, they're continuing and are in frequent repair due to accidents. Just a statistic I'm gonna give the council this evening, we almost average one street light or traffic signal knockdown per week in this community with an accident. So that takes our two electricians to get out, replace, get that pole replaced and put it back up. Uh, it's, quite a bit of time just, just to maintain the stuff that is damaged due to vehicle accidents and so forth. And again, a challenge that you've heard routinely this evening, and I don't want to continue to belabor, but it's important, huge increase in material costs in this, in this area. Other challenges for our facilities, that was just traffic, facilities now with the buildings. Many of our buildings are 50 years and old or in constant need of repair and maintenance. Uh, the cost to maintain these facilities continues to rise. Uh, the longer we defer projects, they only get more expensive and they become larger because uh, they continue to add uh, and build upon the deferred maintenance. As well as we talked about the cost of materials and supplies, they're increasing, far outpacing our budget. So here's some city buildings. If, when I talk currently, when I say city buildings in this department, 
This is really City Hall and the Municipal Service Building that you see right in front of you this evening. So we, we have some overtime increase. We have a basically increase of 6,000 that we're anticipating for staff. The contracted services, again, this is where we have to contract trade work uh, that we can perform in-house. In Could be uh, special, you know, plumbing, electrician. Even though we have two electrician, they can't meet the current demand. Our service, our motor vehicle service. So the contracted services, I will back up, $14,500 we're looking at an annual increase. Motor vehicle sun, uh, fund, you've heard that before, 2.5%. The building maintenance repair, just cost of goods. We originally had, when we were talking about this in-house, in we said, uh, we, we got to really bump this up. We're not meeting the needs. We backed it off. We, bet, we cut it by $20,000. We're coming in now with only $30,000 this evening. Utilities, again, talked about that's throughout this whole thing, 5% increase. Janitorial supplies, 46% uh, 46, 46 jump in costs since 2020. Um, so overall, looking at around $59,000 in known budget increases for building maintenance for City Hall as well as the service building. Civil defense, this is our emergency uh, warning system. Minimal increases here, mainly utility and the, and the motor vehicle fund. Street lighting, again, there's some overtime associated with this. A lot of it's in response to those accidents to go out and secure and turn off the power uh, to make sure it's, it's safe. Motor vehicle sun fund is increasing 2.5% as well as the increase for utilities. So a total for street lighting, roughly around 17800 Just, just, just to sit, you know, your, our utilities, they increased 5%, so it went up 15,000. Roughly our annual budget is about 300 plus thousand dollars just for electrical for our street lighting in the city. Just put, put that in context. Additional needs. This is a new position we're actually requ requesting within the city Department of Public Works and it would be a labor position. This position primarily is to meet the needs in the buildings and grounds and uh, facilities traffic division. Uh, Mike Wilmis and his team have been struggling. And primarily it's, as you've recalled the budget, we had, you know, city hall and the service building, but Mike's division gets routinely requested from other facilities, which I fully support we have the police station, all the fire stations, the transit building, the Mead Public Library. They're all city facilities. So at some point, we as a council and a community have to figure out what's the best way to manage all of these facilities on a comprehensive level basis. Because right now, the police department has their facility, they budget accordingly. Fire department, they have their facilities, they're trying to maintain transit, again, and the Mead Public Library. And if we can do something more comprehensively on a planned approach and have it more uniform in terms of how we address these needs, I think we'll be better off and the community will help, um, you know, save in terms of planned, planned and uh, better maintenance activities of preventative maintenance over the long term. So that's what this position would help with is we routinely have to pull resources from different areas to respond to things throughout the city in either our buildings or even in in the in the streets for traffic issues. So that's about a sixty thousand dollar added value to the budget in terms of that position. Not only would it be used there, but we we also have other needs within the department. Since it's a general labor position, we would use this person as a floating labor to be used anywhere within the Department of Public Works on an as-needed basis, if available. Some of the other additional needs that we're looking for, and again, uh, some of these, these that are highlighted could be 
moved into what I would call a capital outlay or a one-time ex one -time expense. So it wouldn't be an ongoing impact to the budget. So we have traffic control supplies. We, it, we talked about the sign and the need to fabricate signs and be on top of that and replace them. We actually, our ap current applicator that ap applies the vinyl to the aluminum sign blanks, uh, it's old, it's 30 years old, it's unsafe, it, uh, there's no one replacement parts, we need to purchase a new one, it's 25,000. We have a work boat, mainly for dock repair, electrical repair, water line, and it's also infrastructure replacement. We are currently using the pontoon boat uh, that we have at the marina, and it's roughly, uh, I'd say it's a 1970s vintage. It's kind of, it's kind of rough. But uh, it, it's something that in terms of what we do, especially with the bridge and, and some of the outfalls, it's something that we're looking to, um, again, use for the department. This would uh, be, again, one-time expense. Then other ones are some tools and equipment that we've got here, a cable and pipe locator, as well as a drain snake camera. We also had in the budget originally 75,000 for a journeyman electrician. And after talking a little bit more internally, we just felt that given the market and where the trades are with journeymen, we'd be very hard pressed to recruit someone, I guess at our rate that we have internally for uh, journeyman electrician at the city. It'd be very hard to recruit. So we decided we're gonna pull that out, so that's a savings of 75,000. But as you saw earlier, we increased some of our contracted services because we know we're gonna have to contract occasionally with a journeyman electrician to do certain work for us that we just cannot um, have the capacity to, to get to. Any questions in this section? Move on. No other increases within this division. Boat ramps, again, these next two are not affecting the general fund. They're internal service funds or special revenue funds, so they don't hit the tax levy. Boat ramps is a very minimal increase. We're looking at 1,800 or roughly 1,900, and may, mainly it's cost of goods to do repairs of about 1,000 additional, and then it's just the utility increases that we've been talking about. And ultimately, the marina, uh, there we have a pretty large increase for marina operations. And again, that's for going to be up for study. And um, we'll be talking about that uh, along with this budget process of what the future holds and what do we want to be doing at the marina long term. Parks and forestry. Current challenges, it's, they, again, this, this division is challenged since 2010 with the shortfalls of labor and full-time staff with our constraints. Now, I'll just give an example. For example, during, during the year, we, it takes full three full three full-time staff are needed just for the garbage in our parks. And we roughly pick up 200 tons of garbage in the parks on an annual basis. That's 400,000 pounds of garbage just in our parks. We have 17 facilities, 24 playgrounds, 36 parks, two miles of beach to maintain. And we, during the winter time, they'll, they'll plow and maintain 26 miles of sidewalks and trails. And it's all done with 10 full-time staff in the parks division. Forestry division continues to be challenged with the Emerald Ash Borer. We have a significant backlog since last year's storm. Although we, I, I, I am so proud of the department and their response to last year's storm and the amount of cleanup that was able to be performed by everyone in the department, not just forestry, but everyone contributed. But nevertheless, it really set us back in the forestry area to maintain and keep up with our urban forest. So we, you know, we have still 20,000 trees in our community. We have four arborists for 20,000 trees. So they have to trim, they have to remove, they have to plant, they have to grind the old stump as well. So there's a significant backlog that we are dealing with. And the goal is to now with any new tree that is planted that we trim it once every eight years so they have a proper training pruning so that as they get older, they don't have leaders and different branches that become dangerous and can snap off 
as we experienced this last, last year with some of our more mature trees. So what are our known budget increases in the parks? Again, 25,000 in contracted services. If we're not gonna increase labor significantly, we have to then backfill with other areas such as contracting with, those, with, with some of the special needs. So uh, we're looking to do some landscaping in some other areas that just need attention that have been overgrown and we're not able to, to manage ourselves with our current staff. So that's where this 25,000 would come into play. Again, the next two, real easy, 2.5 for motor vehicle charges. Our operating supplies of, is, up, is increasing $10,000. Uh, Topsoil has gone up 20, 12, uh, excuse me, 12% 12 in 20, since 21. And uh, the amount of topsoil needed, since we're, we're doing a better job of removing our stumps, our, our topsoil has increased as well. Building maintenance repair, we mentioned our park shelters. Yeah, we have 11 park buildings that need new roofs right now. Uh, they're listed here, I'm not gonna read them because we're, I'm taking a lot of time and I wanna be conscious of that. Uh, I apologize, but we have a big budget and we have a lot of different activities that we do in our, in our community. Again, 5% for utilities, for electrical, uh, the same for Maywood. The equipment maintenance, roughly a $5,000 increase, and there's chemical costs associated with that as well. We talked about chemical costs earlier. It's, it's been an ongoing issue. Increased cost in electrical repairs and upgrading to efficient LED lights. We, we've been doing it with our street lights throughout the community. Now we need to get into our parks and, and get LED high efficient lights to help with the uh, ultimately the energy consumption. And ultimately we have some employee engagement for and forecasted tuition reimbursement within the parks division, as well as supply costs for janitorial. So overall, you know, we, we we're look, roughly looking at a $99,000 uh, increase. But the biggest uh, reduction was under equipment maintenance, we had a $50,000, $55,000 increase originally. We, we put some of that since it's going into equipment and we're looking to put that more into the capital where it'd be for capital purchases of playground equipment moving forward and not put it on an annual operating budget. Additional needs. Okay, this is the other full-time regular position that we're requesting within the Department of Public Works as just a general, general labor position. Uh, as I mentioned, parks, they, were, they have only 10 full-time staff to meet. And one of the big issues is we have a park for, foreman that um, because of the, the, the capacity of where we're at is on a mower most of the summer and not able to get out and, for, and get work set up and get things planned as accordingly. So we're, we're not utilizing our existing staff in their fullest capacity. So that this position again would be a, a tremendous need in that area. Again, being an entry level labor position, this position could be used throughout the organization as is needed for uh, working with that uh, throughout the organization. The other one would be an upgrade. It's $5,000 upgrade. We, we, we don't have a lead arborist that's in the field. Tim Bulls, our city forester, but he's not actively monitoring their daily production. He's meeting with citizens. He's looking at other tree issues throughout the city, looking at problems and getting things set up. That's his job, that's what he's out there to do. So our crew in the field needs, needs at least one of the more senior needs to be uh, compensated for leading and directing those. We have a young crew now. We, through retirements, we've lost, uh, three of the four that we have. So we have one person that's a senior arborist and the other three have been within the department within the last year. So that's the other little issue that we're having is with their, their inexperience, they're a little bit slower than what we had in the past as last year with, for instance, with the storm event. The other areas that, that would be a, a significant increase in the parks is our seasonal staffing. We're looking to uh, 
acquire what I would say is a higher level skill set than just employees coming in to cut grass. We have, for instance, during the summer, our beaches. We could have, we have a beach cleaner that is pulled by a, a tractor. It's a specialized piece of equipment, but it's a seasonal operation. If we could find or recruit someone either that has that type of skill set that is willing to work during the summer and be paid at a higher rate that we can trust, that's what we're proposing in this area, is to find uh, Basically, I, I don't want to say a retired person that would come back, but anyone that has the capacity to work part-time or doesn't want to work full-time anymore and wants to be able to still use their skill set. The other proposal in here would be with this, with this increase in salaries for temporary salaries is to look for someone that would be, the concept would be like a park ranger. And basically it'd be an ambassador to our parks that could help and monitor the beach and the lakefront area, primarily with our park rentals, as well as just monitor activities, and encourage people to be in their best behavior, uh, maybe encourage them not, want, not let your dog off the leash, and take away maybe, or help, not take away, but help with the police department and other activities. It's not a high priority. They're not, we don't want to waste police and other resources to respond on stuff that we think that can be handled with maybe a, an ambassador, someone that can get out and talk to people and just be present in their parks, but have, an, have the ability to have some authority as well if needed. So that's something, that's a concept we're still developing, but we, we want to have at least the discussion on the benefits of such a position. And again, it would be a seasonal during our peak season when we have a lot of tourists in the area and our beaches and our parks are, are full. So all of those additional needs is roughly $102,000. $15,500 is for the aerator. That's just a piece of equipment. We have 325 acres of open and green space. And uh, we're not, we don't have this piece of equipment to aerate our parks. Again, one-time expense, it might not be able to, could be funded with other opportunities. Our cemetery. Cemetery, it's um, increased cost of our contracted services. Again, we, we recruit and hire a lot of seasonal to maintain and cut and keep the cemetery uh, manageable during the sum summertime, as well as we have some future needs in new plots to be laid out, as well as cremation spaces within the cemetery. So overall, we're looking at roughly about a $10,000 increase. It was originally around 23,000. We cut back uh, significantly. We reduced it by about 10,000, the contracted services. Any questions about the cemetery? Alder Decker. Um, is the cemetery, is, is it solely on taxpayer dollars or is it run on its own fund? How is it, how, what, what, how is it taken care of? It's taxpayer dollars, but there is a perpetual care fund that is set aside, but it's, and I'm going to defer to Caitlin, I believe the, the perpetual care though is regulated. We're not able to use that fund necessarily to fund operations. We can use a portion of the income or interest earned. Is that, is that the correct way? Yes, that's correct. There is a, a cemetery perpetual care fund where the dollars have to stay within that fund. The interest that is earned throughout that, uh, throughout the year is done. Um, there's a one-time transfer done each year to move that to the general fund to help supplement and offset some of the costs in the general fund. But it doesn't cover the full no. cost of it. But we do charge for um, some of the burials and those types of fees. We do have yeah. fees associated with the actual plots and burials that do get passed on to those who un unfortunately use them. Okay. So we, we, we have a charge for interments and that's now we, we contract that work out. In other words, we used, we used to dig the graves with our own staff and everything. With the retirements and over the years, we significantly downsized the cemetery operations. We used to have four full-time staff at the cemetery. We're down to one. 
And then that person manages the seasonal. So what we'll do is we'll work with the funeral directors and, and when there's a burial, we'll contract with a contractor that comes in with their excavator, digs the grave, we help with the interment. There's a fee with that, but that fee is directly passed through through the funeral. So it's not any, so really our cost is the cost of maintaining the cemetery grounds and maintaining the plots themselves with a full, one full-time person and the seasonal. Motor vehicle division. Hopefully this one should go fairly quick because this does not again impact the general fund. It's an internal service fund. So all those, remember those two and a half charges, percent increases, that funds this division. But this division has challenges. So much of the equipment is reaching the end of its service life. Uh, it needs constant repair and maintenance. And this constant repair and maintenance is getting more expensive every year. As well as the repairs, because the equipment's older, are becoming more labor intensive and substantial. So it's taking longer for things to get repaired. So most importantly tonight with this division, we're requesting another certified truck mechanic because we've been operating for a uh, short one mechanic in this division for approximately, I would say since 2010. So what are our known increases? We have some clothing allowance that we're in, in, adjusting, um, $100. There's some, some employee engagement again. These are pretty small. The increase, the, the motor vehicle service fund actually pays its own fee for its equipment. Uh, oils and lubricants is increasing 10,000. Vehicle maintenance and repair, and this is the big one, it's $85,000 increase. And again, that's um, as of this point, through six months this year, we've used 65% of that budget. And we show that we need another 15 to 20% increase in, in just the repair line items. And ultimately the motor vehicle fund also pays for the computer and IT service fund. So this fund is looking at no one, just the known increase is about 106, uh, 500,000. 106, 500. The additional needs, this is where we're requesting a certified truck mechanic. Uh, this goes back, we, you know, the, the fire department had a mechanic that was at the uh, fire station, the headquarters years ago when that person retired the decision was made to shift the fire equipment to the service building for repair. Then we had approximately six mechanics. Over time with retirements in that, we've lost one and, and now we're, like I said, we're at five. So given, given the nature of not only our own equipment, but in addition with the fire and the need to prioritize fire equipment, basically ambulances and their rigs, we need to make sure we have a dedicated mechanic to be responsible and be able to turn that around and make sure we're, we're keeping their rigs on the road. As well as in times of emergency within our own department, especially during snow operations, we're running around the clock with f uh, four mechanics and one service mechanic. And at times it becomes unsustainable with the amount of repair to keep our snow fleet on the road doing, their, doing the work that is needed to keep the city clean. Any questions about that request? All right, we're at the end, getting there. Public Works Administration and Engineering. Biggest challenges here, talked about it all night, a little bit about resources, but succession planning. Myself and the city engineer are nearing retirement and it's imperative that we address this fairly soon. We need to get a smooth transition of leadership in place. This past year, the administration engineering has a huge void. We had a retirement of an employee that has served with the city 50 years. In addition, me, as well as the city engineer, have a combined 66 years of service to the city of knowledge of infrastructure, history, that type of uh, internal uh, history, knowledge of infrastructure and engineering and past development projects. So it's vital in terms of this to be transferred to someone
for the next generation to understand and have this background, especially in, in decision making that's upcoming. So some of the known budget increases that we have is overtime. We've adjusted it slightly. It was 17.5, now it's 15. This is for uh, some of the administration staff, engineering personnel, mainly on projects that they're inspecting in the field. Uh, clothing allowance, $100. There's the IT service fund. This is a big, big number, but this is part of Eric and, and his department, their whole consolidation of how they've charged. We decided to say it's the best to put it all under administration for the, rep, for the entire department. Uh, motor vehicle fund, a small charge there. Tools and equipment, mainly for some computers. Contracted services, this is an area where between the city engineer and, and my, my office that we hire consultants, uh, traffic studies, wetland delineations, uh, geotechnical, soil borings, some of the, that, that type of specialty engineering we don't have in-house, so we have to contract that out. Given, given the amount of interest in the city in terms of development projects, road projects that we have planned, we're just experiencing an increased uptick in, in this type of level of contracted services. And ultimately, tu tuition reimbursement. We, uh, we talked about some new employees as well as getting training and, and help with them moving forward. So looking at a total, we had originally thought it was 147, it's now down to 122,000 in this area, which would be my, my area administration as well as the full engineering department. Additional needs. Um, I'm requesting a deputy. Um, I was the deputy for probably 15 to 18 years and before I became the director. Uh, it was never, never filled. It hasn't been filled since, well, 2011 when I believe I, I was appointed as the director. Um, we've always had a deputy. It's very important. Uh, even though I have superintendents, they have needs every single day that they're um, routinely, and I think they can vouch that they're in my office asking for questions, advice, what's going on. I'm happy to help, but some of the daily type of activities becomes overwhelming, where I should really be focusing more on long range uh, types of strategic plan, capital improvements, and making sure we are prepared for the future. So. That's what this request is. The other thing is, we got a plan for the future. Um, every other department has at least somewhat of an assistant or a deputy in, in, in their TO. Department doesn't have that. Department of Public Works, that is. I show this picture here because I also want to talk about the engineering staff. Uh, the gentleman on the right was Vic. 50 years of service, we have Ryan, 30 years, myself, 36, and then Jordan's also in engineering, 32, 34, roughly. I don't know exactly, but he's been there just about as long as I have. And, uh, it's been a pleasure and an honor to serve in this community and be part of a team that has been here for that long a time. It, it, I think it's, it's kind of unheard of, and it's just been awesome, and... Uh, just wanted to share that with everybody. But my fear is, is when we decide to leave someday, and I'm not, not announcing anything tonight, don't think that's what this is about, but it, I want to, as a, as, a, as a leader and as a director, I want to assure that when I leave that the department is in good hands and it's prepared, that it's going to be functioning just as good, if not better, when I leave. I, I want to set it up for success. I don't want to leave and have it fail and have the burden fall on this staff because this staff is burdened enough with just their day-to-day -day responsibilities, let alone picking up the, dire the director or the management of the department. The other issue is when, for in engineering, I had, actually it was like adding a position of an assistant city engineer. There is an internal candidate I feel strongly that has already uh, been somewhat mentored and has taken a lot of initiative to probably fulfill that role. So it could be potentially a promotion versus an added position if we so desired to continue this discussion. But it would create an assistant city engineer to help with that transition for when 
Ryan or the city engineer retires and moves on again, setting up that opportunity to transition the leadership so that it's successful for the next, next round. I'm gonna end with that. <laughs> Alrighty, we have a few questions. Alder Filiki Paneski. Thank you. Um, there were several subcategories to your report, understandably. Can you give me a number of how many full-time equivalents are in this budget? Additional full-time equivalents. What, what I, 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 I will. Um, what I'd like to, oh, I just, did I, oh boy. And if you don't have it right away, you can provide it to well, us. Two, two of them for sure were the labor positions. Those were general fund. As well as the deputy position would be general fund with the caveat where probably about 25% of that salary could be funded with wastewater because currently my salary is 25% because I oversee the, the wastewater. The deputy would have that somewhat of a role with that as well. Uh, the, the mechanic that we talked about in the motor vehicle would be funded under the motor vehicle fund, not general fund. What's the total? Total for the department? Well, I'm try what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to distinguish how much is hitting the general fund as new positions. I and don't care about that now. I just want to know numbers of bodies. Okay, uh, let's see. Two laborers, deputy, mechanic. So four guys. We had six at one time. It's down to four. Okay, thank you. Alder Salazar. <laughs> So I know we went through several of these. You'll be sending out a revised one um, that's just gonna have the 2023. Yep, and I would please just include the revised budget. I don't wanna see what you submitted the first time and what is significant, yep. what the difference is. Right. So 23, what the actual request is and the variance of it so that we, it was really difficult to follow without having to see those numbers. Um, so there were nine other departments that went ahead of you that did that. So if you could, if you need a reference, or I think maybe Caitlin might have sent something out, yep. I'm assuming. Understood. I, 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 I totally get what you're, what you're so requesting. You could send those back I see it. Really and we'll, we'll take out the original. We're just going to go with the revised number with the 2023 budget. So and you can, the variance. Yep. And the variance total. Because it's important for us to see how much of an increase that really is. Yep. And for those who are going on the 11th, that's important too. So please make sure to include the 2023 what your revised budget is in the variance in order for us to see this. Any other questions? Alrighty. Seeing none, our next scheduled meeting is September 11th, 2022. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Ayes have it. We are adjourned at 8.43 p.m. Thank you, everybody.